Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about pyro sequencing. I have a different video. It's an animation of pyro sequencing in my channel but uh, not any demonstrative video like that. So here I'll be talking about the chemistry behind the pyro sequencing process which is very interesting. But uh, pyro sequencing is an also known as high throughput sequencing which is also kind of modern uh, generation sequencing process. And in this sequencing process, it's very, very fast and uh, it produces the data simultaneously for many uh, different fragments at, at a time. And we can combine the data together to get the idea of the complete genome sequencing. Now, this pyro sequencing, now there are many different modern age sequencing technologies like pyro sequencing, Illumina sequencing, 454 sequencing ion torrent sequencing. In all the sequencing, there are some very basic common things that are present every, every, in every sequencing process that we know of, very common things. For example, uh, the preparation of the DNA fragment which is to be sequenced. Now the thing differ, differs is how the DNA is sequenced, right? That means the sequencing of the DNA means uh, you have to know the idea of each of the nucleotide base that is present one after another. That is the actual sequencing, the meaning of sequencing. And that meaning of sequencing is organized and we can get the idea uh, only by checking uh, for different complementary DNA strands and DNA sequences there. But in all these other next generation sequencing approaches, there is a specific process known as the preparation of target DNA for DNA sequencing. And that preparation is very same. The only thing differs is the exact sequencing process. Some uses DNA fluorescence technology to detect, some uses uh, the production of uh, hydrogen ions to detect which is ion torrent sequencing, some detects uh, the production of uh, as I told you the fluorescence which is 454 sequencing and some uses the production of light as a source to know the sequencing. In this case of pyro sequencing, it is the light that is going to tell us whether the sequencing is occurring or not. So, but the first stage, first few stages are the same. In the stage is this is the genomic DNA, genomic DNA, the complete DNA sequence, large DNA sequence. What we need to do, we need to fragmentize this DNA because this is big. So, we will break the DNA down into small fragments. So, we get double stranded DNA fragments like that. Once we have this double stranded DNA fragments, we add what is known as adapter DNA sequence. This is known as adapter DNA sequence, okay, to the end of, of all this uh, double stranded breakdown portion of the breakdown DNA of the genomic DNA. So, we add the adapters. After adding the adapters, we separate the double stranded DNA into a single strand. So, now we get a single stranded DNA because we separate both the strands. So this is the ultimate condition that we get. We get a single stranded DNA adapter attached to one of this end. So we get this. So this is the preparation of the DNA that we are talking about. Once we have this DNA attached with one adapter at the end, then we take this DNA and we want this DNA to be fixed permanently into a solid surface. That's very, very important because you cannot run this whole process in liquid solution. It's not possible. We need to attach it to a solid surface. The solid surface that we're talking about is known as beads. We have the bead and the bead is surrounded by single stranded DNA sequences. The bead is covered by single stranded DNA sequences all around, okay. Now this DNA we prepare this adapter. Remember the reason we add adapter is to fix this target DNA to the bead because bead carries a single stranded DNA the sequence of it is complementary to the adapter sequence. So we now we add this adapter containing the target DNA and attach it to each of the beads. They can easily pair as you can see it here they can easily bind and now the target DNA remember tar target DNA is only the black portion here. So the target DNA is now fixed now we can run this process so the DNA will not go away from this place. So once we prepare the beads, now the exact process of DNA sequencing to be done. Now we take the beads, we load them into what we know as sequencing wells, okay? Small grooves where we can put uh, these beads, we put the beads here and they contain some volume area so that we add all the enzymes, 
and all the chemicals that is required buffer solutions and washing solutions for the process for the reaction to occur so we load the beads we load them here in different wells so once everything is done now the final process of DNA sequencing will take place and this is the chemical process of DNA sequencing now the chemical process of DNA sequencing relies on a very simple fact that every time DNA polymerization take place pyro sequence pyrophosphate is released okay now if you look at the idea of DNA sequencing this is a growing chain let's say this is the 3 prime hydroxyl group okay let's say this is the template DNA okay now the new upcoming nucleotide sequence carries three phosphate groups together this is the nucleotide with three different phosphate groups now this hydroxyl group it has a lone pair of electron which can attack the alpha phosphate as a result it will kick this two different phosphate groups out it is known as a pyrophosphate And there is the name pyro sequencing comes from this pyrophosphate. Now pyrophosphate is very energetic molecule. It contains a lot of energy. Any molecule with lot of phosphate groups attached contains higher amount of energy. Remember that. So pyrophosphate is very energetic molecule. Once the pyrophosphate is released, let's look at here now the step by step details. Let me delete this part. everything now whatever we're looking they are occurring at inside the wells okay so we know this is the basic thing this is the process and we know there are DNAs added there say let me draw it here once to make you understand say this is the adapter portion the rest of the DNA I draw only one for clear understanding now here this is the condition now this is the 3 prime hydroxyl remember that is already present okay so now we are only doing the polymerization stages now we know chemically that once polymerization stage will perform it will generate the inorganic uh, the pyrophosphate PPI now the pyrophosphate can produce ATP it can convert it into the adenosine triphosphate with the help of an enzyme and a chemical molecule the molecule that we require is known as APS or ammonium persulfate and the enzyme that is responsible for doing that is sulfurylase sulfurylase okay sulfurylase enzyme using ammonium persulfate to convert pyrophosphate into adenosine triphosphate so ultimately adenosine triphosphate is generated from PPI so once ATP is generated ATP now converts luciferin into luciferase now the thing is in normal in these wells PPI is normally generated once we add every nucleotide sequence PPI is generated after that what we add we add sulfurylase as well as APS so what it does it will convert PPIs into ATP so now we have ATP is present then we add luciferin okay and luciferin is converted to light in presence of ATP in when we add the enzyme luciferase okay so in this reaction this is a chemical reaction as you know biochemical reaction and in every stage we need to add many enzymes and also some substrate for conversion of this substrate into products so we add first the sulfurylase and APS to convert them into ATP then we also need to add luciferin as well as luciferase to produce light but the actual thing if you look at the simpler form this is the chemical form the simpler form is every time a nucleotide sequence is added light is produced this is the mechanism how it's producing but every time a nucleotide sequence is attached light is released and there are light sensors that can detect the production of light there could be ccd sensors cmos sensors 
common light sensors that are, that are present in your digital camera or mobile phone. So the light can be sensed with the sensors, okay? And the sensor will give the output, the data, the output data with which we can understand what sequence, what DNA sequence we are dealing with. Now remember, every time it's this whole process is going on, we run this whole process for one nucleotide at a time, okay? We add it for adenosine first, then let's say for guanine, and at every single time, and after each of the round, what we do, let's say add adenine, and we go for the adenine completely, uh, go for the adenine, and cytosine, thymine. So we do this. So once we add adenine, then we check for whether there is presence of adenine. Let's say here, there is a thymine, one thymine residue. We are checking for adenine. So we add adenine. Adenine pairs with it. It generates light. So the light is detected by the sensor. Output is provided. So we know that yes, adenine is properly added or attached. If there is no thymine present, adenine will not attach. No light is produced. No sensor sensitivity. Nothing can be seen. Okay. This is the idea. Now, the intensity of light can also be measured, remember, because you know, we need to know exactly whether it's adenine or guanine or such stuff. We know that because we add each nucleotide at a time. We only add adenine in each of the wells, then once the whole process is done, we check for the light production, we sense it, then again we wash that whole well off. Now, remember sometimes in these cases, uh, sometimes we also run it without the beads, sometimes we also run it in the, in the solution. See, in case of in the solutions, what happens? In this case, if you even wash off the wells, the DNA fragments will not come off because they are fixed, they are, they are attached to the beads. But this pyrosequencing can be of two different types. This solid or solid surface or liquid surface. This is the solid surface that we are talking about. When the bead is attached, the DNA is attached to the beads. So the DNA will not come off. But in some cases where it's a liquid surface pyrosequencing, then in this DNA sequences are not present and attached to the beads. They are just floating into the, into the solution. In that conditions, we cannot wash the wells because if you wash the wells in that condition, it will take the target DNA away that we don't definitely don't want. So in those cases, instead of washing, we add another enzyme called apirase, DNA nucleotide apirase, like adenosine apirase thymine apirus. Now, these apirus enzymes will break down adenine or thymine or guanine, cytosine. They will break down all these all these nucleotides so that they will not uh, interfere and they will not give us any blank results or any wrong or error results. This is the idea. But this is very simple. The intensity of light is very, very important. If one thymine is there, one adenine attached, intensity will be lower. But if consecutive three th thymines are present, C adenines will, would have attached, so the intensity of the light will also increase, okay? So we can measure the intensity of the light uh, from, from this graph using the CPU, the data we get. And by that, we understand whether uh, we have one adenine or two adenine or three adenine or what exact sequence we have right after another. So we run it for each of the nucleotide. Let's say we run it for adenine first, then we add for guanine, thymine, cytosine each at a time and every time the process is done we wash it off but if it's in the lipid phase state then in those case we cannot wash it instead of that we need to uh, use apirus uh, to break them down okay to minimize the error so this is the idea of pyrosequencing i hope this video helps you to understand pyrosequencing if you like the video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that thank you